In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. You guys hear about that bill that's being passed in Tennessee right now mm. regarding lettuce? This is, it's really terrifying. Okay. Okay. At the University of California, they have figured out a way to put human vaccines within vegetables. Why? Dude. And so the whole bill is basically trying to label different vegetables, which ones have vaccines and which ones don't. So that people are allowed to choose. Because apparently if they're trying to roll it out without telling anyone <gasps> the difference of this one has a vaccine and this one does not have a vaccine. What are we doing? Why is this even a conversation? I don't know. Why Stop putting we... vaccines in vegetables. Quit, please. Please. Quit touching the food. I just, the food's fine. That's I, why I don't eat vegetables. Yeah. I'm just saying if they could do it sneakily, they'll do it sneakily. Yeah. They probably have already been doing it. Bro. And now they're just kind of like, wait a second. Um, yeah, we just figured out how to do this. Yeah. Like, just, oh, well, you gotta let us know which ones you're putting in. They're like, let us. Yeah, make a, let us, let us, let us know. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it scares me. Uh, to me, it doesn't surprise me if they've been doing this. I find it very crazy. And I am fortunate enough to where I have been able to grow my own lettuce, cabbage, things like that. But I do not grow enough of it that I do have to go out and purchase it sometimes. And, yeah, it's 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 pretty crazy out there. I'm not a huge fan of this at all. This is the secret to remembering everything. You can remember literally everything. What do you mean by that? What's one piece of content that after you've seen it, you just remember your the rest of your life? Mm. I'll give you the answer. Something cursed. I don't know. Close. What? It's something super scary. Okay, yeah. Something scary and something that spikes your adrenaline. Now check this out. There's a theory that adrenaline spikes in our body make us remember things so vividly. Any single time you felt embarrassed, any oh. single time you felt like you're in danger, how well do you remember that moment? That's why they come Super up. well, right? In the Middle Ages, bro, after teaching kids in the Middle Ages, the elders would throw kids into a freezing river <laughs> to spike their adrenaline. So they found out that spiking their adrenaline will make them remember and retain all of the information in their head. Theory, <clears throat> let's say you're studying for an exam whatever it may be you study 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 try to make yourself super anxious make yourself feel like oh i'm gonna die oh, right yeah. you're gonna remember that shit bro oh yo I, I know why asian and immigrant students are the smartest students because they remember that because <laughs> their parents are behind their backs like this bro hey I, I actually can recall quite a few times in my life where i was afraid of something it, it sticks with me personally other than when i'm not nervous or anxious so i can see this being kind of true how about any of you? Have you guys experienced better memory when you're facing trauma or fear? Because that does seem to stick with the person. There are lots of rise in tensions all across the world. Yes, a lot of it is scaremongering, but still, there's some pretty crazy stuff going on. Now also, as you obviously know, there are a lot of nuclear warheads positioned all around the world. Each country has certain ones which are capable of unique things. The UK now, of course, has the Trident, which is pretty insane, but it did fail twice on launch, so that's great. But Russia is no exception. So Russia's number one nuclear power is called the Satan Two. Now this is a nuclear capable intercontinental ballistic missile. I mean, the name doesn't sound very fun, does it? Now it was unveiled back in 2018 with the plans to create this thing. And in 2023, it was finally in production and actually tested. Now what is so scary about this nuclear warhead it's just a nuclear bomb right well you can take a look at some of the examples of bombs like this like the czar bomb which you know would wipe out a whole city probably even whole country like if you look at the difference between hiroshima nagasaki and the czar bomb it's not great and this is even more advanced than that now this thing weighs 200 tons it can deploy over 15 nuclear warheads and can travel nearly 12,000 miles and it travels at 16,000 miles per hour now if you have a look at a map of the world and see how quickly the thing would travel to places, that's where it gets scary. So, to get to the US, to get to the East Coast, it would just take 14 minutes from Russia. 14 minutes. I wish we could fly that fast on a plane, mate. Now, to get to Finland, which is obviously a lot closer to Russia, it would take 15 seconds. France, 210 seconds. And the UK, just 200 seconds. That is literally just over three minutes, so if we knew that thing had been launched, we have barely got any time to prepare. Now, of course, that is all a little bit terrifying, but I've seen a lot of people saying that the UK and the Trident is literally more powerful than this. Now, if the Trident did work and it was working successfully, then I'm sure it probably would be able to take these things out. But at the moment, with the two failed attempts, I'm not so confident. But let me know in the comments down below, hit that follow button, and I'll see you in the next one. That is pretty terrifying, and I really think that these organizations get a kick out of naming these. Why would they want to call it Satan? Why would they want to 
be so bold with calling it something so biblical that just that's just like a slap to a lot of people's face it can cause a lot of terror i get but that's just kind of crazy to me hey if you haven't done so already go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel i only ask once per video and i make a video like this almost every day and if you look at this graph you'll see that 21 percent of the viewers that watch my videos are subscribed to the channel but 78 percent of the viewers that watch these videos they're not subscribed but keep coming back for more content so to the 21 percent that are subscribed thank you so much Tucker Carlson is part of a giant psychological operation and so many people are falling for it. He has even stated how he has tried to join the CIA. That's not suspicious at all, but he would not be the only journalist who had ties to the CIA. Please, for the love of God, understand that the world is a stage and these individuals all play a role. They are part of a club that you are not invited to. As we see Tucker Carlson wearing the red string. As we see other influential people wearing that same red string. Oh, and who else wears it? Ah, Mr. Vladimir Putin. Well, you may be asking, what is this red string? Well, it comes from the Kabbalah. It comes from the occult. Wearing a thin scarlet of crimson string as a type of talisman is a Jewish folk custom which is practiced as a way to ward off misfortune which is brought by the evil eye. The tradition is popularly thought to be associated with the Kabbalah and religious forms of Judaism. Now what is the Kabbalah you may be asking? Well here is a quick summary. It is esoteric Jewish mysticism as it appeared in the 12th and following centuries. Kabbalah has always been essentially an oral tradition in that initiation into its doctrines and practices is conducted by a personal guide to avoid the dangers inherent in mystical experiences. Esoteric, which means hidden, the occult, Kabbalah is also tradition in as much as it lays claim to secret knowledge, kind of like the Gnostics, if you know anything about history with the Gnostics, secret revealing or secret information. Okay. Of the unwritten Torah, divine revelation that was communicated by God to Moses and Adam. Though observance of the law of Moses remained the basic tenet of Judaism, Kabbalah provided a means of approaching God directly. Please take note of this. The purpose of the Kabbalah, this esoteric hidden knowledge, is to approach God directly because they deny Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father. No one approaches God, but through Jesus. They are going their own way. This is satanic. This is anti-Christ. For they deny that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and He is the only way to the Father. They don't need Jesus Christ for protection. They trust in their mystic teachings, like their red string, as a good omen of protection. Good thing I have the spirit of the living God living inside of me to protect me from the evil eye and not a red string. Please do not fall for the psychological operation that this man is running. He is playing a role for individuals to get behind him, to get all worked up because the name of the game is divide and conquer. Do you not notice the division with the border, with Russia and Ukraine, with Israel and Palestine, with the Democrats and the Republicans, man versus woman, it's everywhere because Satan is dividing us everywhere. And this man is being played as a role to divide, to have people suckered in believing he is really good. He really is for the people. You know, he may be genuine, no doubt. He may be sincere, but he is still playing a role. He is still being played as an operative. Do not trust what's going on, guys. Please get out of this world. Please get out of this world. Don't trust Elon Musk. Do not trust Donald Trump. Do not trust Tucker Carlson, Russell Brand, who is also pushing a new age. Jesus, again, this whole idea of bringing us all together because you are witnessing the false light coming forth, revealing the darkness in the world. But this false light is still darkness because it denies Jesus Christ as the truth, the way, and the life. He is the only way. These individuals will tell you Jesus is a good guy. Russell Brand, he's a good guy, good teachings. But they will 
force and smush all religions together that Jesus was one of the ways. He was an ascended master. Christ consciousness. We can all channel this because this goes back to the Kabbalah, goes back to the mystic teachings, which will be the one world religion. All religions are the same. There are many paths to God. We all have God living inside of us that we need to channel because we need to reach a higher frequency. Do not be deceived. For the only way to God is Jesus who died for us, who became sin, who knew no sin, so we could be the righteousness of God in him through faith, through trust, through belief, in humility, not in esoteric knowledge, not in our own ways of approaching God, but through Jesus living the perfect life for us and giving us his righteousness so that we can now have the Holy Spirit inside of us conforming us to the image of God. As Romans 12, 2 tells us, being transformed and renewed through his word. So we look upon Jesus for eternal life and also to grow down here, conforming to him, allowing the fruit of the spirit to come forth. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. And we do not love the world. We do not look at world leaders. We do not look at Tucker Carlson. We do not look around here investing in this world. We invest in Jesus. We focus upon him, understanding that this world is coming to an end. Judgment is coming. Fire is coming. And everything will be revealed. But first, there will be the deceiver who comes on the stage deceiving even, even the elect if that were possible. And Tucker Carlson, Donald Trump, Russell Brand, these individuals are part of this false light, this false narrative of tricking people to think, oh, they are the truth. They have 90% truth, but it is the 10% that is rat poison. Do not be suckered in to this world. Let go of the world. It's over. It's done. Worry about your family, worry about your community, and keep your eyes focused upon the Lord. Do not be deceived. Do not be tricked. The deception is coming. I can't, I can't even grasp what deception is coming upon this planet for the deception already here is insane. The psychological operations everywhere, the brainwashing, it's on a different level and it's going to escalate. But that is why we focus on the Lord, asking the Holy Spirit for discernment. And we trust in the one who overcame the world for us and we can rest in him. I love you guys all so much. God bless. And remember, the just shall live by faith. I really think that a lot of these people are kind of put into their place for a reason aside from telling the truth. But it could be something that I'm just overlooking and maybe I should follow certain individuals really closely. But I always have this level of distrust to a lot of people out there. And then this is one of those individuals for me. It's just everything that he comes across is, is almost too good to be true. And it's never the full information also, you know? What do you think about this individual? Because I, I think a lot of people really trust this individual. Three habitable planets at the same time. The earliest known fossils on Earth started around three and a half billion years ago, just after a period known as the late heavy bombardment, when the inner planets were getting absolutely railed by asteroids and debris. This is also around the time it's believed that Earth was a water world with an ocean twice as large as today that possibly covered the entire planet. Just before that on Mars, its climate was cooler and wet. A shallow ocean and rain would fall around the equator, while the poles were mostly snowy. The atmosphere would have been thicker, but still mostly carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas, and that would have provided additional heat for a planet farther away from the sun. But it wouldn't last. Mars quickly lost its atmosphere and turned into the wasteland it is today. Venus has a very different story. On the tail end of Mars losing its atmosphere, Venus was just becoming a possible paradise. It's closer to the sun, so it would have warmer temperatures, a shallow ocean, and similar ingredients to Earth. Instead of quickly fading away like Mars, Venus's conditions might have lasted as recently as 700 million years ago. All of this was made possible, by the way, because our sun was much younger back then, and so 30% dimmer than it is today. The idea of other planets containing sustainable life, I don't know if I necessarily believe it because I don't even know if space is real, so. What's up, TikTok? So I've been, I'm doing an experiment that I've been wanting to do for a while. It's uh, measuring the, the ether or the uh, voltage uh, in the air and I've got a setup and a little bit of light left I wanted to show y'all um, what I've got going on here so I got my multimeter the red lead is hooked up to the ground wire I got the ground rod over there black lead is hooked up to a 50 foot spool of 26 gauge magnet wire 
and it is actually hooked up to a carbon fiber rod that I sanded down and got bare copper touching it, hooked up to some balloons. So I'm going to be measuring, I have, it, I have the wire marked at every 10 feet. And so I'm going to measure the voltage at 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, and 40 feet. So I'm going to document this and I'll be posting the video in a few minutes. Okay, bye. What's up, TikTok? I currently have a set of balloons. I'm running out of daylight here, but I have a carbon rod hooked up to those balloons and the wire uh, connected down to my multimeter. And it is grounded into my ground rod. I'm running out of daylight, but right now I'm about 30 feet in the air. I have the wire marked every 10 feet. I'm currently at 24, 27 volts. And I'll show you what happens when I start pulling it down. So right now, I have about 50 feet of wire that I can uncoil, but I'm not going to tonight. I'll do it when I have more daylight. But here's what happens when I start pulling it down. So now here it goes down. Now we're about 15 feet. About, still about 10 feet. As I pull it down, it gets less voltage that is absorbing from the uh, from the atmosphere. Turn the light back on. So now we're at roughly probably six feet above my head. And now I'll let the wire go and you can watch it climb. The higher you go up, the more energy you get. Anyway, I'll make another video tomorrow when I have more light, but that's what they mean when you collect, when you're harvesting energy from the ether. The higher you go up, the more voltage you get. That's AC current, 21 and a half volts, and I'm about 25, 30 feet above my head. Anyway, cheers. That's pretty interesting, and these are probably some of the reasons why they're trying to ban these types of social platforms, because there's so many people able to practice and experiment with things and give us knowledge on certain types of things now i have the equipment to try this out myself and i'm kind of curious about doing it because i could potentially build a device that is up within a 50 foot height that's grounded and feeding a current to whatever i want to power uh, what I would like to see from this individual is like hook it up to something to see if it turns on to see if you can get a charge or something that shows that these volts are actually accurate and they're working because I would really be interested in this. This is very fascinating to me and it makes sense as to being able to pull energy from the sky and convert it to free energy. I think that this individual is onto something. I think this was a very good test demonstration and I'm hoping to see more from it. Princess Kate not being seen for a month. So the last time she was seen in person and her kids was December 25th, Christmas day. There was an ambulance at the palace on oh, Christmas yeah. day that has not been um, noticed by the palace or like been any reported. So, but she was supposed to go in for abdominal surgery on January 17th. For what? Okay, then on January 26, King Charles went to the same hospital. It's like the royal family hospital, like, and were, was released on January 29th or discharged. They said that same day, uh, Princess Kate was also discharged, but no one saw her leave the hospital. A week, a week after Prince Harry flew to England, <gasps> met with King Charles for only 45 minutes, then went straight back to L.A. And then two weeks ago was King Constantine's memorial service. Okay. And Prince William was supposed to go give a speech at the memorial service. Because it's his godfather. Mm -hmm. And 45 minutes before the memorial service, he says he's not coming <gasps> because of it was a, quote, personal matter. March 10th was the UK's Mother's Day. Princess Kate released a photo with her and her children. Beautiful photo. It was instantly flagged by all these people that observed it. It's a fake picture. There's 16 errors within that photo. A Spanish journalist says that they have an inside source within the hospital. The surgery went well, but recovery did not go well. But then another British journalist and hinted at the fact that 
Princess Kate is in a mental hospital right now. Aww. These are all theories. These we all have theories. no idea what's right. She could be fine. She probably is fine. But <laughs> it's, just, it's very strange how no one within the monarchy is giving clear answers or real pictures um, of what's actually happening. That's got to be one of the worst parts about being a part of fame or royalty is there's always suspicion. There's always an image that you have to hold. And I've been seeing that picture floating around TikTok quite a bit. And it does have some very suspicious marks in it that do look AI. I'm just going to say the question that's on everyone's mind right now. Why are we allowing ancient people to rule our country and make our decisions for us when we're doing all of the work and they're just making money off of what we do? The average age of Congress right now is 58. But the majority of the members are in their 70s and 80s. Do you know who I don't even trust to drive a car? People in their 60s. If we can't even trust you to drive a car, how could we ever trust you to make decisions for over 300 million Americans? Not to mention, they don't even listen to what we say. They vote how they want. They don't care what our opinion is. That's why they're getting rid of TikTok right now when no one ever complained about that. No one cares. It's just a fun little thing that people like to post on. People are making money from it. People are getting information that they normally would not receive. And yet things like the housing crisis and minimum wage are being swept under the rug like it's not important. I honestly do not understand how we haven't barricaded them inside of a building like the French just did to some of their politicians. We need to show them some kind of force. What are we afraid of? Their military? The police! We literally have people in this country right now that are all about, they ain't taking our guns and they ain't taking our freedom. Well, where are you right now? We need you. This is your time, okay? Minutemen, step up. Start forming your militias. It's time to send this towards the enemy, who are the people in charge of our country, unfortunately. With no term limits, no age limits, these people are going to just keep screwing us over until they're in the ground and their familial wealth can keep being inherited by their families, keeping the poor poor and in their pockets while they keep making their money off of all of our hard work. It's time for a change, and the only way it's gonna change is if we get younger people in there and just force these people out. We need to restart our government with people who actually care, people who have actually worked, people who have actually paid taxes and suffered and gone through what the average American goes through day to day. Because I'm telling you right now, if we do not do something and separate ourselves from these old monsters that do not care about anyone other than themselves and their familial wealth, we're going to be in the ground with them. That's where this country is going to go, and we are not going to be able to recover from that. They want to talk about China getting all of our data and stuff. They don't need our data. All they need to do is wait for us to eat ourselves from the inside out because our politicians and our senators and our government is broken. It doesn't care about the people. And when the people realize that the government doesn't care about them, what do you think happens? That's how civil war starts. That's how infrastructure fails. And that's how governments collapse. They don't need to do anything. We're killing ourselves. And I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, or Independent. This affects all of us equally. I never cared about sides like that growing up at all. Because I realized that they've set up our government like a game of fucking Halo. Like it's red versus blue. That is not how a country is supposed to be. It's supposed to be all of the people coming together, not choosing sides, but coming together to make decisions for the country. Will all of the decisions made be liked by everyone? Probably not. But at least we came together and made the decision. Together. If we want any real change, we need to weed out the whole choosing someone just because they're red or choosing someone because they're blue. That is the most childlike thinking I have ever seen and I've never understood it. I've known people on both sides, both great people, but they just make these decisions based off of a color instead of what is actually important to them. So let's ditch the colors, 
come together as an American people, lock some politicians inside some buildings, and show them that we mean business, that we want our country to actually be a successful country instead of a money market for the wealthy. Because I'm done. I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired and I want change now. Yeah, I've always found it extremely off-putting that we are always fighting a side between Republicans or Democrats, things like that. I'm always the individual that's always been in the middle. I've never once voted in my life. I think that voting is kind of pointless in this day and age, and it's always tipped to the scale of the most popular anyways. But, I mean, I could be wrong on that. Leave a comment letting me know because that is a touchy subject to some people. But for me, I have not personally had any president come up and make me want to vote because of what they said. Most of them, honestly, turned me away from voting in general because nothing applies to my life situation. It's always for people of higher wealth, and that's fine for the people that are in higher wealth. I have nothing against that, but it just seems like the presidency is not made for people of the middle not necessarily middle, but lower class, and I'm just not okay with that. And there's nobody that's tried to get lower class out of lower class to middle class. It's always, oh, well, we're here to support money, 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 or we'll make more money. And we're sinking still to this day in this country. So one day there might be a president that I'll say, yeah, well, I kind of agree with this individual, whether it's a red or a blue side. I really don't even know the difference that much. I try not to pay that any attention. I like good ideas. Yeah, I've always found it kind of odd that we've always fought for different colors as well with the Republicans or the Democrats. I myself kind of fall in the middle. I do not vote, and that can be a very touchy subject for some people, but I am to the belief that voting nowadays does not matter. The scales are always tipped in the most popular's favor. And I've seen that growing up time and time and time again. So when it comes to voting on these specific presidents that we have running now, I really just don't see it being a thing that I'm into. And no president has really benefited people that are in the lower class everything is an idea for the lower class but the lower class never get to prosper off of a new president it's always middle to upper class that always prospers even the class even even when the presidents even when the potential presidents say that they're going to help take from the rich to give to the poor it never ends up that way what do you guys think about this? I do think that we need to stand up here in America, at least. We do need to stand up against these politicians and older individuals. I'm not going to say anything bad about their age because there's plenty of old people out there that I know that are really chill, really good, level-headed individuals, very sophisticated. And I I'm not going to knock the older individuals because of their age. I will say that their mentality might not be adapted for today's era, though. And that might have something to do with their age, but a person is able to think and know what's right and wrong and know where we are leading in today's era. Again, what do you guys think about this scenario? Do you think that maybe they do need to get rid of older individuals from the office? Or do you think that they just need to change their mindset and that's all it is? You used to work at Area 51. There's this facility that is at S4. It's in the side of a mountain. This time that I went in, there were hangar doors open. I went into the hangar door, and in the hangar door was the disc, the flying saucer that I worked on. It had a little American flag stuck on the side, and I thought, oh, my God, this finally explains all the flying saucer stories. This is just an advanced fighter. I went by, I slid my hand alongside it. I got reprimanded immediately for touching the thing. This is the only time it became exciting. You know, the rest of the time, it was really an ominous feeling. This project was to back engineer the alien craft. And specifically, it was to try and back engineer and see if we can duplicate the technology with available materials. Now I knew we were on the absolute beyond, actually beyond the cutting edge of science. The excitement kind of turned to dread at some point. 
because the amount of power we're dealing with is astronomical. To produce the effects like this equipment does takes huge amounts of power. It's incredibly dangerous to tinker with something like that. Maybe they have a device that can filter that ether out and provides them with unlimited energy. That would make sense if that was the case. Like where are they storing the power device if they have a power device? I know I'm kind of rambling on a little bit, but this kind of stuff always fascinates me. And I'm a little bit on the, this individual might be a psyops as well because Bob Lazar is an extremely popular individual when it comes to UFO talk. But it, it always seems so genuine when he's talking about it. So I, I'm really conflicted with it, but I'm super fascinated by it. We're spiritual sperm. When you were a sperm, which everyone here was, you lived an entire life and then you died to release your genetic code into the egg to be born again into something 30 trillion times your size. So that's going to happen again and your new body will be just essentially exponentially greater than what we are now. And so if you look at what Jesus is telling us, that's what you would tell a sperm if you could go back into the, the womb. Literally, as Nicodemus said, are you saying I should crawl back into my mother's womb? You would tell the sperm, look, this life doesn't matter. It does matter, but it doesn't. All you have to do is swim straight. Don't turn to the left or right. Endure until the end until the egg. If you love your life in the womb, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life in, once you reach the egg, you'll gain it. You need to be born again. Then you, in the womb, you can hear your father, but you can't see him. For, for now, we see through a glass darkly. Someday I'll see you face to face. It's literally like a child in the womb. And all a child has to do in the womb is develop. Don't resist the development that is already happening. That's why you're not saved by works. Yo, that's crazy. Which part? Just everything you just said. Do you like the concept that you know you start off as the seed and the egg as the seed you're living this whole life until it's your time and when it's your time you pass and then you're born again and now when you're born again you are now in this form we are this seed we're a humanoid seed now at this point and when our time comes and we pass what are we going to be birthed into next that's where the interest of spiritual beliefs and maybe heaven and or hell. And if that's the case, what's after that? Is there an after that or is that it? What do you guys think about this? Because I, I do kind of think if there's a heaven and hell, there's a passing that leads into something even more. Do you ever hear the Adam and Eve theory? Yeah, I think you told me about it. So the apple, right? <laughs> a lot of people think like the apple might represent but one of the common ones is like the apple, it actually just represented knowledge. Because yeah. you think about it, can you sin if you don't no, know? You, yeah, I don't think so. If you don't know you're doing wrong. Because it's not, it's not purposeful, I it's guess. It's not purposeful. Yeah. If the tiger goes ahead and kills a human, is the tiger like evil? No, like it's probably doing its natural thing to get food and eat. Yeah. But if the tiger was aware, like, oh, I'm taking human life and I can do other things to avoid it, then with that knowledge, yeah, I guess you could say the tiger is like evil. Damn. But without the knowledge part, it's almost a thing of like, okay, he doesn't know though. So is he necessarily bad? Yeah, no. Until he, you're taught. Because fam, like, remember the in Adam and Eve where they were, mm -hmm. and it was only until they had the apple there, they were like ashamed. Mm -hmm. You know, they knew like, oh, I guess this is type of thing mm -hmm. but naturally like we're just meant to be free yeah. humans you know like, like back in the populate. ages yeah yeah i don't necessarily agree with the analogy that they used with the tigers but i definitely have heard that the apple could have been a form of knowledge and it might have even still been a fruit and then when we bit into that fruit we gained knowledge i've definitely heard this theory before and i find it interesting but I, I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Do you think that the Adam and Eve story is a true story and that the apple was a real part of the story? Or do you think it's just a metaphor for something more? And if it is, let me know in the comments what the metaphor is because I want to hear it. This is proof that nobody ever went to the moon. Ah, here we go again. To travel to the moon, astronauts would have had to pass through the Van Allen belts. Correct. The Van Allen belt is a zone of charged particles around Earth. Yep. Well, the Van Allen belt can get up to 20,000 degrees Kelvin, which is like 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, sure, particles in the belt could reach that high, but the entire belt wouldn't necessarily be that temperature. The Apollo spacecraft was protected by aluminum, which has a melting point of less than 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, so if it went to the moon, it would have literally melted on the way there. Well, it depends on where in the spacecraft. The heat shield was very complex with many layers and many different materials, so this wasn't just aluminum foil wrapped around the spacecraft. So? Space is still pretty much a vacuum, so even though some particles might reach an energy, 
a heat of 20,000 Kelvin, and that is the extreme for the belt, there aren't actually a ton of particles. What I'm saying is, while these tiny particles might be very hot, the spacecraft did not encounter them all that often. But it still traveled through those temperatures. Not really. Again, you're using the really bad extremes. And also, the Van Allen belt is a belt. You can go around the really bad parts. This is the path the Apollo astronauts took, so while they did still go through it, they avoided the really bad parts, and they were going extremely fast, so they were there for like an hour. And what about the radiation? You're saying those astronauts were totally fine? Oh, the astronauts were definitely still exposed to radiation. All astronauts in space are. It's a risk of the job. But the spacecraft did do a pretty good job at shielding them from radiation. The highest amount of radiation any astronaut on an Apollo mission received was on Apollo 14, and it was about equivalent to the amount you would get from a full-body CT scan. But still, NASA is working to make it even safer now. That is so ridiculous. My biggest question that I have, and the reason why I left this video in here, if you believe the science in the theory of the Van Allen belt, you don't believe in the same individuals that basically came up with the science saying that they didn't land on the moon because of how treacherous the Van Allen belt is. It just kind of seems a little silly to me that you could believe that there's a Van Allen belt, but do not believe that they landed on the moon because of how harsh it was to travel through. But if you understand, please leave a comment letting me know because I'm curious about this argument. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. As always, if you were interested in any of these clips that we watched today, links in the description with each clip in the order that we watched them in. And with that being said, have a good day.